What's going on you guys? How you guys are doing today? Today we're looking at the Ward's Airline cassette recorder player. It has the original adapter from Montgomery Ward Airline, if you remember them. And here's the, here's the voltage right here. Made in USA, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 8 watt. And it's a 6 volt DC, 300 milliamp adapter. Here's the original microphones that came with it from Ward's Airline, have the original stands. And you plug the microphone in here, into this jack, right here. And what, what we plug into this jack, to let everybody know, is this is if you want to plug in another, it says if you want to plug, you know, radio into this. EXT stands for external. SP would be like speaker. And I'm gonna show you the quality. These are, these are all solid. Everything in here is all solid metal construction. And this is not, I mean, this is like really nice, fine metal record head, playback head, metal capstan. And, you know, these. this is a nice machine. And there are radio forms and, you know, you know places you can send it and if you didn't know how to work on it. And one of the things I stress to people is when you find something vintage, you don't want to just plug it in because you could you could damage a lot of components. You could have capacitors out of tolerance. You could have electrolytics, but everything is not just related to capacitors or electrolytics. There could be something else going on. You want to test all areas of the circuits and do any troubleshooting or anything else. I mean, this is a nice, nice find. And what I really like about it, it takes four... See batteries. Look at those. Look at those battery terminals. How many times do you get an electronic item and, and the springs are all corroded with battery acid? Not even a trace of anything that ever leaked in here. It takes four C batteries. There's this. There's the contacts down there. And look at something on the back of this. I want to show you. And this is made in Japan. There's a number right there. 703 Awards Airline. It takes four battery. One and one and a half volts size C awards model number 13151 Japan you know it's getting harder to find this stuff and even look at the foam on here still intact and it's getting harder to find that this is this is in really nice shape now there are places you can send this stuff off to to be really um, fully refurbished remember the video that was out there on the wheel to reel tape machine and um, this is a nice piece there's the leather case, all original, all original leather. Nothing wrong with the snaps on here. All original mint condition. I mean, the fine stuff like this out there, you either go to auction or you pay top dollar for. I'll tell you what, this is in really, really nice shape. I mean, and this and this was taken care of. And this is quality. This is how I, I always remember cassette recorders. They were heavy. They were built well. And, um... Back in the day, you used reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, or you recorded from reel-to-reel. -reel. And, and back in the day, you there were some 8-track players, I was told about them, that could play or record. 8-tracks were, were, an, were, another, were another thing. You know, cassettes, you know, back in the day, you had Magnavox, Motorola, or you had Packet Bell, or you had, you know, Zenit. RCA, you know, Zenit made a lot of transistor radios, and um, Philico made a lot of the TVs as well, and I'll let you get a side view of it, you know, and this is the quality that I really, really like, and um, this is a nice machine, and this is going to stay in my collection. Now, you can still find cassette tapes today. You just have to go to a source. A lot of, a lot of early recording studio equipment, you know, you used reel to reel, and you put it on reel to reel, you know, tape. And this is a really, really nice piece. And all the microphones are here. There's one microphone here that was added later. This is the Channel Master. This one is made in Japan, right here. And I am really, really happy to have this in my collection. You know, when you come across something vintage, you know, you can have it restored and you can enjoy it. You know, back in the day, you didn't have smartphones, you didn't have, 
you know, the cloud. You know, you did everything either with cassette, reel to reel, or you had a track. Then when records came later on on the scene, 45s and you know, 33 vinyl, and then you had 78s. You know, a lot of the record changes back then were BSR, and then you had the voice of music, or you had Magnavox and the cabinet stereos. And a lot of cabinet stereos had 8-track players too. Or they had the record changed by Voice of Music, which was made by Magnavox. And a lot of this stuff is not old and obsolete. I found a cabinet stereo in one of the um, one of the drift stores in Fort Walden. And again, with that, I told everyone, you don't dare plug it in. You could fry a component so quickly and destroy something so quickly, even if it's an old vintage radio. You have to go over it thoroughly and, and make sure. And if anything's out of tolerance, like the cap, so let, don't plug it in. You have a cap that shorts or electrolytic, you're going to damage more components. This is my Ward's Airline cassette recorder. I went, I, I was, I inquired this today. And this is a very, very nice piece. You know, I like vintage electronics. I've always enjoyed vintage electronics. You know. One of the things I would like to find for my collection is a, is a vintage school classroom record player. They were made by Caliphone, Newcomb, and Audiotronics. And I'm sure there's schools out there that do have some that are either in mint condition. I'd like to find out anyone's a school teacher that would know. But I remember the old school record players. Everyone had a classroom record player. I remember when I was a kid, you know, we had, we had Audiotronics. Classroom record player there with this blue color. Audiotronics and Caliphone and and Newcomb were very nice machines. Newcomb also made industrial tape recorders. They were very big and bulky. I remember when when I when I was younger, we had one in the classroom. Newcomb was made for industrial standards. I remember a radio that was on a form that radio TV photo that did a video on. There was a Newcomb tube radio. And Newcomb was in a lot of schools or vice versa. But these are the microphones that came with it. These are the, you know, Ward's Airline microphone. And it plugs in right here. Here's the jack. And what these are is you can put the strap on from here or vice versa. But this is, this is a really, really nice piece. And I don't know what year this is from, but I just wanted to share... I put tape over the former guy's name and I didn't want to display his name for privacy concerns. The former guy that gave this to me, I want to thank him very much. I mean, I'm really happy um, for privacy consent. I'm not showing the name on here who gave me this. But look at the leather on this. This is really nice and this leather has metal all around the edges. This is really, really nice. This is how they did things. This is from Japan. And and not even not even anything that's shown that it's you know, that it, that this was kept inside mostly. But you can see there's the case, all original stitching for this cassette recorder here. And I wanted to share this today. There's the connectors, the cords right there. The undercarriage, very clean. So until next time, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now.